close your eyes and think thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill is the whole reason why we're practicing. We have goodwill for ourselves and goodwill for others. Goodwill for ourselves in the sense that we want a happiness that really lasts. We've seen the happiness that comes from sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. We realize that it's not enough for the mind. We want something better, something more reliable. And the Buddha's pointed out that through training the mind, through generosity and virtue and meditation, this is how you find a true happiness. At the same time, we have goodwill for others. On the one hand, we don't want them to do anything that would get in the way of their true happiness. We don't want anything in our happiness to cause them any harm. We're taking responsibility in our search for happiness. There are so many people who search for happiness in an irresponsible way. They think that maybe getting some material gain would be good, so they go out there and they get as much as they can. And they create a lot of enemies. They get status, while well, there are other people who, who've been deprived of that status. They want praise, they want pleasures, but the way they go about it often causes a lot of other, other people a lot of harm. So it's no wonder there are divisions in the world. If we were to look for happiness in a responsible way, the way the Buddha recommended, there'd be no, no reason for conflict. When you're being generous, you're not taking anything away from anyone else. In fact, you're giving. Same with virtue. You're not taking anything away. And you're also setting a good example for other people, showing that human beings can behave in an honorable way and find happiness that way. That's a good gift to others. And same when you meditate. You benefit from the meditation, the people around you benefit too. The less greed, aversion, and delusion you have in your mind, the less you suffer. And the less is going to come out in your thoughts, and your words, and your deeds. So these things are not prowling around the neighborhood causing trouble. This is called a responsible search for happiness. And it's a good example for others. We, we can't wait for the rest of the world to be responsible. We have to start with ourselves. As John Sowat used to say, each of us has only one person. In other words, the one person who we're responsible for, and that's us. So we have to be responsible for our actions. At the same time, we're looking for happiness. So look for happiness in a responsible way. The Buddha shows us how that was his gift to us before he left. He could have, after his awakening, he just could have gone off and stayed alone. Wouldn't have to bother with setting out the religion, setting out the vineyard, and all that trouble he went through for 45 years. But then he would have been the only one to benefit, aside from the few people around him. But he realized that he could set out a religion like this as a good example for the whole world, and in a way that would be remembered. Here we are on the other side of the world, and we still know of his example. 2,600 years later, he did a good job. It's up to us now to pick up what's there of the Dharma, what's there of the Vinaya, and to get the most benefit out of it. That way we benefit and we set a good example for the people around us and for generations to come. This is a kind of goodness, a kind of happiness that spreads its benefits all around.